Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm continuing with my discussion of essential oils and perfumes, the basics. And today we will be talking about the structure and composition of perfumes. In my previous lectures, I've discussed the, uh, basically the essential oils and where they come from and how they're produced. Modern perfumery uh, is a big business in the world. Uh, global sales are actually up to about 30 billion now today. U.S. sales at about 6 billion. And there's about 750 brands in the store at any one time. The percentage of women wearing perfumes uh, is said to be about 87%, but most of the times I've given this presentation, the women in the audience say that is not true. So I don't know where they're doing their surveys. It might be in the fashion areas of LA or New York. The cost of an expensive perfume, such as Chanel No. 5, is probably about, not 50, but $75 an ounce. Now, most of the perfumes uh, industry is controlled by five major corporations. They encompass all the major brands. For example, IFF, which is International Flavors and Fragrances in New York, is the uh, owner of Francois Cody. So they uh, basically control the whole perfume industry. There are a variety of forms of perfumes. Basically, perfume is 20 to 30 percent uh, of uh, concentration, usually in alcohol. Uh, the eau de perfume, 15, eau de toilet, 10, and the cologne at 5 percent. And this uh, not only reflects the price as the concentration goes up, the price goes up, but also the longevity. So a perfume will last you probably 24 hours, an eau de perfume probably 10 in an OD toilet, perhaps four or five. So it depends on how long you need the uh, benefit of the perfume. The structure of a perfume is, is typically uh, in this triangle structure uh, developed by uh, Pisse, a Frenchman in the 1800s. And he uh, broke it down into a head or top note. Usually it's more referred to a top note heart notes and bass notes, heart note or middle notes and bass notes. The top note is lasts about an hour. It's very assertive. It's effervescent. It's usually green, citrus or aromatic and green, and it lasts for about a half hour. The heart notes are very typically uh, of florals. Uh, oftentimes in recent perfumes, now they're fruity, such as Justin Bieber's line of women perfumes, and they last four to five hours. And the bass notes are much longer lasting, uh, woody, amber, enamelic. This is typically sandalwood or patchouli or a lot of the enamelics that are now uh, basically synthetics because of the uh, inhumane treatment of animals to produce these enamelic notes as I noted in a previous lecture. Uh, when you do s uh, sample a perfume, usually in your department stores or a perfume store, you given a strip. The strip you'll note Oftentimes you'll note first the top note. You do get the full effect of a perfume, but to really experience the perfume, you should apply it to your skin and wear it home for several hours and see how it develops on your basic chemistry and over time. And that's the way to uh, select a perfume for yourself. How do they create a perfume? It begins with a brief, which is a blueprint or the underlying story. It can be a 10, 15 page document outlining all the uh, finances and uh, iterations for producing the perfume, uh, but oftentimes it's also just a conceptual description, such as a walk in a field of flowers, which would be a floral, of course, or a flesh splash of water from the Mediterranean, some of the aquatic or oceanic notes of the newer perfumes. and can be expired, inspired by uh, any of a special moment, song, color, and or a texture, silky, metallic, and so on. So you can see that you can give these uh, terms to a perfume, and that's the charge of the perfumer to produce this for you. Uh, the perfumer then develops a new perfume from hundreds of essential oils and synthetic chemicals. Uh, this can, you know, perfumes can have hundreds of different uh, components. Basically, usually they start with a heart note, the, the major uh, component, and then add the, the top notes, such as a citrus or, or the fixatives, such as sandalwood. And this goes through iterations of plant panels smelling different vials of perfume and selecting the best one, and then this is modified until everyone's happy with it. And it can take up to a year. Now the naturals are sweet and heavy and floral. 
But the synthetics added became a big part of modern perfumery. They add strength and sparkle to a blend, and they create a sheer clean lighter perfume, such as the aldehydes. And the aldehydes added to the perfume created by Coco Chanel were what made that really a special perfume. Uh, it's, consider, it's classified as a floral aldehyde, and I'll go through these classifications or accords of perfumes in a later lecture. But basically the brief that uh, Coco Chanel gave was I want a woman to smell like a woman and not a flower, which was typical of the perfumes before her time. Now remember Chanel number no. 5, which is the best-selling perfume of all time, was developed in 1921. And her perfumer, Ernest Beau, a Russian-French perfumer, uh, added uh, a lot of these aldehydes and she wanted this sexy provocative but clean perfume and that's what the aldehydes did. It created a powdery luxurious signature. In the top note you smell when you do smell uh, Chanel number no. 5 is aldehydes. It also has a lot of florals, ylang ylang, jasmine, rose, and neroli as we discussed in earlier lectures, sandalwood and vanilla and vetiver in the bottom notes. It's a floral, powdery, woody, citrus, vanilla scent that has been around for uh, about a hundred years now, and it's an exceptional, exceptional perfume. Uh, the creation of a perfume uh, was described by uh, this, uh, on the lower right I've shown a book, The Perfect Scent, produced by Chandler Burr, and he, what he did uh, is he followed along with the uh, perfumer Jean-Claude Elina in the development of the uh, perfume uh, with the brief The River Nile. Uh, Jean-Claude Elina is a perfumer for Hermes, uh, and uh, the one half of the book, The Perfect Scent, is dedicated to uh, the, uh, the development of this Un Jardin sur le Nile perfume. And uh, they went to the, uh, the, the Kitchener Garden in Ashwan in the, in the Nile, they smelled the markets, they experienced it, and uh, Jean-Claude developed this very light, effervescent type perfume. One of the interesting notes in here that he added after many iterations is, if you'll see in the top note, there's a carrot note. It also has lotus, green mango, and it's a very nice modern perfume. Citrus, green, floral, tropical, fruity, and sweet. Men's perfumes, of course, are a big business now, too. Uh, they did a a, a trial of preferences of men by measuring their blood pressure and they found that men responded most to pumpkin pie with lavender. Well, of course, that's into the stomach, but uh, the very popular perfume Old Spice has been around for many years. Uh, I actually wore this as a young man. Uh, it's got a cinnamon, carna carnation, citrus uh, aroma. It's considered an oriental type perfume. And Michael Jordan came out with New Spice. Uh, in more recent years, which is woody, spicy, and citrusy as well. Okay, that completes my discussion of the structure and composition of perfumes, and uh, in my next lecture I'll be talking about the accords or families of perfumes. Thank you.